So what did happen the night George Michael died? Tweets about suicide. Rumors of drug abuse. And the boyfriend who now says he spent the night of the singer's death sleeping in his car. George Michael's death on Christmas Day at his Oxfordshire mansion aged just 53 brought an outpouring of grief from his fans around the world. The cause of death of the reclusive singer, who had battled with drugs and depression, was said to have been heart failure. But after the first post-mortem results were inconclusive and further tests were ordered, the mystery surrounding his last moments has deepened. Yesterday, his boyfriend Fadi Fawaz denied sending tweets saying the star was suicidal, claiming his Twitter account had been hacked. The confusion was compounded when Mr. Fawaz, who originally said he spent the weekend at the mansion in Goring on Thames, told a newspaper he'd slept in his car overnight. With the results of new tests not expected for six to eight weeks, here Helen Weathers examines the questions still surrounding the singer's death. Why was George alone on the night he died? The singer's boyfriend, Australian-born celebrity hairdresser and photographer Fadi Fawaz, has said he found George's body lying in bed on Christmas Day morning when he went to wake him for lunch. On Boxing Day, a tweet from an account believed to be his read, it's a Christmas I will never forget finding your partner dead peacefully in bed first thing in the morning. I will never stop missing you. Another tweet read, we loved each other very much and were together almost 24 hours a day. He later told a newspaper, everything had been very complicated recently but George was looking forward to Christmas, and so was I. It has now emerged that Mr. Fawaz, 40, slept in his car on the night the star died alone at home. This weekend he told a reporter, I fell asleep in my car and I never saw him that night. Tweets from his account claimed that George had wanted to die and had killed himself, but Mr. Fawaz later said his Twitter account had been hacked and closed it down. Thames Valley Police called the singer's sudden death unexplained but not suspicious. Mr. Fawaz told a newspaper, the police know everything. That's the most important thing. But why did he sleep in his car on a cold night? instead of in one of the many bedrooms of his boyfriend's 16th century mansion. What were the complications he alluded to and who hacked his Twitter account? Why didn't he go to Midnight Mass? The Christmas before last, George attended Midnight Mass at nearby St. Thomas of Canterbury Church, so his absence this year was noted by Church Warden David Bedell. Some residents of Goring-on-Thames, where the star bought his riverside home more than a decade ago, even wondered if he was there at all. No one appears to have seen him arrive in the days leading up to Christmas, and only the ornate festive wreath on his front door and lights indicated he was home. Mr. Fawaz was said to have been spotted in the village on Christmas Eve afternoon, but the last reported sighting was of George watching a torch-lit procession to the church from a window of his home on Christmas Eve. The last photos of George enjoying a meal with friends at a local pub last September, showed him looking overweight and unwell. Said by close sources to hate his changed appearance a far cry from the chiseled sex symbol of his glory years was he too embarrassed to be seen in public, or was he unwell? was Mr. Fawaz, who claimed to be with the star almost 24 sevenths, planning to stay with George at the house throughout Christmas and where was the car parked when he slept in it. Handsome, bearded Fadi Fawaz is said to have started dating George Michael in 2009, shortly after the star's 13-year relationship with his American partner Kenny Goss, whom he'd spoken of marrying, ended. George's relationship with the Australian-born celebrity hairdresser and photographer remained private, 
and George only publicly announced that he had split from Goss in 2011 two years after the event. He and Mr. Fawaz were first pictured together walking hand in hand in 2015 in Switzerland, when George was reported to have checked into the most expensive rehab clinic in the world, the Kusnasht practice, costing £190,000 a month. Mr. Fawaz was said to have been left scarred by the death of another close celebrity friend, Boy's own star Stephen Gately, who died from sudden adult death syndrome in 2009. After George's death, Mr. Fawaz posted a link to a previously unreleased track by the singer called This Kind of Love, but was reportedly forced to take it down when lawyers for George's estate cited intellectual property rights. Mr. Fawaz has been by George's side throughout his most recent crises, but in recent months George had rekindled his friendship with Kenny Goss, who, it was reported, rushed back to the UK to see George amid concerns over his health. Forced into the limelight, having found the singer's body, Mr. Fawaz insists he is not the author of tweets since taken down claiming that the star killed himself. One of the suspect tweets read, not sure who that nasty close friend of George was but I was in a relationship with George Michael till I found him dead in bed. Who is this nasty close friend and what is this person saying? Was the star depressed or even suicidal? Rumors about the star's state of mind have been rife since he narrowly escaped death after falling from the passenger seat of a silver Range Rover driving at 70 miles per hour down the M1 near St Albans in Hertfordshire in May 2013. He spent two weeks in hospital receiving treatment for head injuries, cuts, and bruises. Publicists insisted it was an accident saying it was absurd to suggest he might have attempted suicide. The star, who was not wearing a seatbelt, was said to have been adjusting his car door when he accidentally fell out, and the police later dropped their investigation. Three years earlier he was jailed for eight weeks for crashing a Range Rover into a North London shop while under the influence of drugs. In a 2004 interview, George credited his then-boyfriend, Texan art dealer Kenny Goss, for preventing him from self-harm after his beloved mother died in 1997. He said, I couldn't write and felt really worthless. I don't think I could have taken it really. I think I might have been one of those cowards who choose a nasty way out. In recent months, Sources close to the star said he was in despair, fearing his voice had been ruined by a near-fatal bout of pneumonia in 2011. Plans for a 2017 comeback were in jeopardy. Those close to him have revealed he was deeply unhappy and could not escape the pit of his own misery. In a 2011 interview with The Independent, George admitted his life had been shot through with depression. The day after his Brazilian lover Anselmo Felipa, who was HIV positive, died in 1993, George came out as gay to his Greek Orthodox parents, only for his mother to reveal she had cancer. George admitted he never recovered from her loss. Sources close to his management said after his death that he was a perfectionist who had totally lost his confidence. Was there any truth to the disturbing hack tweet that he wanted to die? Was he still taking drugs? Although friends insist the star had cleaned up his act in recent months, George notoriously used a range of sedatives and drugs throughout his life, about which he was open once joking that he dreaded the prospect of Elton John, who conquered his own drug demons, staging some kind of intervention. Exactly what George used, however, has always been shrouded in mystery, with some reports suggesting he'd started using heroin. One source told The Telegraph that there had been previous overdoses, 
requiring treatment in A&E. A family source denied this, saying, the suggestion George was suffering with heroin addiction or used it in the weeks before his death is entirely false. George, who once admitted smoking 25 cannabis joints a day, said he liked to keep busy to stop himself puffing away. In an interview in 2009 he admitted he'd once smoked crack cocaine, although he insisted he no longer did. As for losing his driving license after being found slumped at the wheel of his car in 2007, he put this down to a problem with sleeping pills. In June 2015, it was reported that he'd checked into a Swiss rehab clinic to tackle a cannabis addiction. Who will get his fortune? As well as extreme generosity to charities, family, friends, and even strangers when he was alive, George left an estate worth an estimated £105 million, including property in London, Oxfordshire, Los Angeles, and Sydney. He also amassed an extensive collection of fine arts during his 13 years with his long-term ex-partner, art dealer Kenny Goss, ranking 22nd on Time's list of top 50 millionaire musicians. But who did he leave it to? It is believed the bulk of his fortune could go to his favorite older sister, hairdresser Melanie, 55, and his eldest sister Yida, 57. Part of his vast wealth could be left to his godchildren from his many celebrity friends, including Roman and Harley Kemp whose parents are Wham. Backing singer Shirley Holliman and 80s pop star Martin Kemp. Ex-Spice Girl Jerry Halliwell's daughter Bluebell may also be in line for an inheritance as Kenny Goss is her godfather. But has George made provision for Goss who said he was heartbroken over the death of the love of his life or his current partner Fadi Fawaz? Sources have been reported saying that Goss will inherit a huge chunk of the singer's fortune as George may not have updated his will since the pair split in 2009. One told The Sun, George made a will when he was together with Kenny and as far as anyone knows he has not changed it. Kenny lived with him full-time so will be in line for the biggest share of money.